Which aspect of a foreign culture do you wish they had in your country? Make an attempt to keep public bathrooms clean FFS. Work-life balance. Working to death is not the answer in an Asian society that always want to win or never lose face. Cleaning up rubbish. I am born in Ireland but I am from Romania. They don't clean up rubbish in Romania. This is for the simple fact that there aren't empty trash bins to throw rubbish into. This is most evident in touristic areas like beaches, hiking areas and rivers. There's literally rivers filled with rubbish from tourists who don't have the decency to hold onto the rubbish. That's what I would want in Romania. When I was in France I was taken aback watching people argue about things and not getting upset with each other. As an Australian that was one of the most refreshing things I'd ever seen. In my part of the world people attach themselves personally to every little inconsequential opinion or viewpoint. If you challenge that viewpoint, people respond as if you're attacking them personally and it turns to shit like clockwork. It's such a deep-seated attitude. We ended up with the phrase, no politics at the dinner table. Someone's inevitably gonna get upset and then everyone's having a shit night. French don't give a fuck. They'll debate politics, philosophy, religion, economics, all that shit until they're blue in the face, the mood never drops. You don't feel the energy in the room become more and more hostile, so that was nice. I've heard that other countries are much more generous with vacation time for professional workers than the US is. Probably that. I could really go for more saunas and hot springs. The buttons at tables in restaurants in Korea that request a server. Traditional Mongolian warmongering. Asian night markets. Not many places you can go in the US at night to just walk around. Hang out. Get some food. Other than bars. Guess that's why malls used to be so popular. Edit. Yes. Malls aren't open nearly as late. I guess I just meant lots of people used to go to malls. Maybe they still do? Just to walk around. Eat. And see and be seen. Similar to why people go to night markets. A third space that is often lacking in the US in general. Edit 2. HTTPS. YouTube. B L W W J G B 9 C W U M God damn I'm hungry. Japanese style vending machines. I'm in the UK and they would just be vandalized. Shout out to my Swedish friends. FICA is a social institution in Sweden where people take a break from work for coffee and socializing. It's about slowing down, catching up with friends, and really not being so focused on work. It's the mindset that comes with it about self-care and not overworking yourself that I find so refreshing. In North America, coffee breaks at work typically still revolve around work talk that you don't get a chance for a mental break. Having a siesta midday and then everyone staying up way later and hanging out. Germany here, good internet and mobile coverage. More emphasis of quality over quantity in food. A giant cup of watered down coffee is not as satisfying as a modest sized but decent coffee. A giant chocolate bar made with crappy ingredients that just barely legally qualifies as chocolate is not as satisfying or a proper piece of real chocolate. It seems a lot more normal in the states to go to therapy. Which I wish was a thing here in the UK. Obviously there is therapy here. But from my perspective here it seems like society only thinks you should go to therapy if you have serious diagnosed issues. When in reality it can help everyone from time to time. Also bidets. Never tried one but it makes much more sense hygiene wise. Like, if you had poop on your hand you wouldn't be content with just wiping it off. You'd, hopefully, properly wash your hands with soap and water. Showing the actual price of items in stores instead of having to add the tax on. More emphasis on public transportation like Europe, I'm from you, s. Edit. It's probably the case that not everywhere in Europe has great public transportation. But I think it's safe to say that collectively Europe is better off in comparison to America when it comes to public transportation. Perhaps it would be better to say. Like in parts of Europe. Bike-friendly cities. Teaching a second language early on in schools. Canadian. Edit. This is my first comment to ever blow up like this. I'm glad I'm not the only one who feels this way. Also. Thank you for the golds. Being friendly. My mum was a teacher in my country. Then moved to England and was presented with all these rules about how you cannot make physical contact with children. It sounds weird, but let me explain. If I was sad, I could cry on my teacher's lap. And if I did something good, she'd give me a hug. She was like a second mother to me. I'm still in contact with her. 
Almost 10 years later, when she injured her leg, we'd go to her house to do our projects. Same with my mother, her teacher has been her best friend for 20 years, and she was there when I was born. I understand the reason for the no contact policy. Some people do have bad intentions, but in my country, it is normal to visit your teachers at home, to go to their house to sing a birthday song, to invite them, or be invited by them. I see how it could go wrong, but I'm thankful for the teachers that I got close to, and still am. Also, my mother works with special needs children. Some of them really do need human touch, and we both feel like strict rules like this prevent the child from forming a connection. Being polite, caring for strangers as a society. Take your fucking shoes off in my house. Cheetos. We don't have them in Germany. Edit. Also Costco give me your damn samples. As an American is it too much to ask to not have everyone in a one-upping contest on how shitty they can make their lives my overworking? Just let me work the hours I'm surpassed to then go home. Work to live. Not live to work. Not taking up space needlessly, being considerate to others in common spaces. In North America, people will stand in doorways. Stop to have a chat in the middle of a busy hallway. Basically take up space that is for common use and not think it is rude whatsoever. I cannot tell you how many times I've come across someone blocking a doorway and you give them like 5 seconds to move and then when you say, excuse me, to get by, they look at you like you're rude. You're standing in a doorway people need to come and go out of. Be considerate. Finland ended homelessness. Does that count? The love of cooking food like Koreans and many other Asian cultures. When I dorm, I thought it was so cool when the Korean students would buy groceries and cook food together in the dorm kitchens. I didn't see any American students cook or even use the kitchen. Much less cook in large groups. I think it's a special thing to cook for each other. My BF and I are both impartial to cooking because we didn't have a great environment where a love of cooking was nourished and taught. I live in the US and wish more healthy lifestyles were promoted and more accessible. For example, even if you're just getting a fast food meal, there are much healthier options in countries such as Japan. Rice, sushi, seaweed can be cheap easy snacks. In America, a fast cheap meal is mostly just whatever is at McDonald's. So fries, burger, etc. And the emphasis on getting the biggest, best thing all the time. It can be so excessive and wasteful at times. Edit. This video does a good job of explaining some differences between American and Japanese fast foods. Siesta. More self-awareness, responsibility. I'm from Canada and everyone up here likes to act like we're God's gift to the world and constantly shit on the US as if we aren't basically exactly the same. And it's not just Trump. Ever since I was a kid I've been told. Canada is the nicest most best country. Be glad you're not an American. They're all rude idiots. Chill the fuck out. Moved back to the UK last year after a 15 year absence and it seems there's loads of rages ready to kick off at the drop of a hat. Been to some really chill and happy places and just don't get that vibe a lot on the UK. I wish the U.S. was more at peace with multi-generational households. I mean, we're getting there. But that's more for economic reasons and necessity than it is for genuine cultural change. It's always seemed crazy to me in the U.S that 18-year-olds are expected to move out and never live at home again. And that elderly people are expected to age at home alone or in nursing homes. Like, we could all live together. And it could actually be a good growing, learning experience. Wash your ass. More vacation. Narrow winding stone cobbled streets in the town center. Wearing a mask in public during a pandemic. Like many Asian cultures. The aspect of wearing a mask when a sickness is spreading. Divorce. Or the normalization of it. My family and I immigrated to the US years ago. But we still preserve a lot of aspects of our culture and customs. For a very very long time. My parents told me that Americans didn't know. Real. Love and that they would get a divorce for the most trivial of reasons. They told me that I should be proud that my parents had a strong relationship and that I was being raised by the two of them. I believed it. Even when my parents would have screaming matches where I was the mediator or when my father would hit my mother or when she would make jokes about running away. I remember being very confused when I would have sleepovers at friends' houses and I would see the love between a bio parent and a new step parent. My parents made me believe that because I was being raised by both of my bio parents, who were married, that I was somehow better than my friends who were kids of divorce. That was obviously a lie because some of those friends were the happiest. 
most well-adjusted kids I knew. Meanwhile, I would often come to school in tears and hyperventilating because of the fights between my parents. If divorce wasn't seen as taboo in our home country, then I genuinely believe that my parents would have separated earlier, and saved all three of us a lot of pain and heartache and suicidal ideations. Instead, my home situation has only gotten worse, partly because of their long-held beliefs and overall fears. I know divorce isn't a cure for everything wrong between a couple with a child, and there is a lot of bad fallout waiting to happen in a lot of separations, but it still seems healthier to me than raising a child in such a negatively charged atmosphere and teaching them that that's the norm they should expect. Slash. Not tipping. Even when it's poor service I feel obligated to tip and it just puts me in a bad mood and makes the experience even worse. 